Okay, so in this video, we will give a fairly intuitive proof of the product rule of differentiation. So we assume we have two functions, f and g, where we know their derivatives. So if you recall, the derivative of f is the limit of the change in the function, delta f, versus the change in x, as of course, delta x approaches 0. And let me rewrite this in its long form by recalling that delta f, the change in the function, is of course f of x plus delta x minus f of x over, of course, the change in x, delta x. So if you notice, f of x plus delta x minus f of x is what we call delta f, the change in the function around the point x. And if we isolate f of x plus delta x from this, we see that f of x plus delta x is equal to f of x plus delta f. And you can also think of this very intuitively by simply noticing that this statement says at the value of the function at a point that is a little away from x is of course the same as the value of the function at the exact point x plus a small change in the function. And of course the same is true for the second function g of x. So g prime of x is of course a limit as the change in x approaches 0 of the change in the function g versus the change in x. And as before, if we rewrite delta g long form, the change in the function g, so g of x plus delta x minus g of x divided by delta x. And the same argument can be made as delta g is g of x plus delta x minus g of x. If we isolate g of x plus delta x, we obtain g of x plus delta g. And with these two simple observations, we can now prove the product rule of differentiation. So we ask, how do we find the derivative of the product between f of x and g of x, knowing the derivative of f and g? Well, since we're giving a proof, we have to go back to square one, therefore the definition of the derivative. So we let delta x approach zero, and we look at the ratio between the change in the function f of x times g of x versus the change in x. So we have, of course, this function, f of x times g of x at the point x plus delta x. So f of x plus delta x times g of x plus delta x minus the function at the point x, f of x times g of x. And we divide, of course, by the change in x, delta x. This is by definition the derivative of f of x times g of x. And in our next step, we will simply replace f of x plus delta x by f of x plus delta f, and g of x plus delta x by g of x plus delta g. Let's now expand this product. So we have f of x times g of x, but then minus f of x g of x. So these two terms cancel. Then we have f of x times delta g. Plus delta f times g of x. Now we'll write first g of x. 
so g of x times delta f, and the last term, plus delta f times delta g. Let me divide, of course, by delta x. And now we have three terms on top, a sum of three distinct terms, and the whole sum is divided by delta x, therefore every single term is divided by delta x. So I will simply split up these three terms into three separate fractions. So we have first f of x, then times delta g over delta x, then plus g of x, times delta f over delta x plus, and here it doesn't matter whether you pair delta f with delta x or delta g with delta x, so let me pair delta f with delta x and leave delta g like this. And now if you notice, as delta x shrinks to zero, well, in f of x, there is no delta x, so f of x stays f of x. But as delta x shrinks to zero, if you look up, the ratio of the change in g versus the change in x, so delta g over delta x, is approaching in the limit g prime. So this ratio here will be approaching the derivative of g at x. And we can make the same argument for delta f over delta x. As we let delta x shrink to zero, the ratio delta f versus delta x is approaching the derivative of f, so f prime of x. The same can be said, of course, of the exact same ratio. This is also approaching f prime of x, but what's interesting here is that there is this leftover delta g. And if you notice, as delta x shrinks to zero, then this term approaches g of x. And so if g of x equals g of x plus something, then this must also shrink to zero. So as delta x shrinks to zero, the change in g also shrinks to zero. So even though this approaches f prime of x, it is multiplied by something which approaches zero. So the entire term here will be approaching zero. So what are we left with? Well, in the limit, we are left with f of x times g prime of x plus g of x times f prime of x. And if we simply swap the order of these two terms, we recover what we know to be the familiar product rule of differentiation. So I will swap these two terms and also swap the sum of these two terms. So this will become f prime of x times g of x plus this term, f of x times g prime of x. So as we claimed was the case, the derivative of f times g is the derivative of f times g plus f times the derivative of g. And this completes the proof of the product rule of differentiation.